and let us all that we can to build a better future. There are some breaking news. Uh, this segment was originally going to be about how support for third parties are rising to 63%. And I have an article from The Hill. I have an article from Forbes. And yes, I have an article from The Daily Beast about RFK Jr. running as an independent. Uh, however, again, um, I recently did a segment uh, about RFK Jr. being slandered by David Axelrod and by CNN because, let's face it, the establishment is afraid of a third party run. When the option of shown or is given to voters of a third party or fourth party candidate, um, Biden fails terribly and Donald Trump is in the lead. But again, I said this before, third party candidates are not stealing votes. They are earning votes because Americans, again, 50 percent of this country identifies itself as independent or non-affiliate or third party. And this is the silent majority that must start speaking out now. I've interviewed two other candidates who are running in the Libertarian Party. I wish them all the best. And I also did a recent interview with Dr. Cornell West. And the reason why I'm bringing up Dr. Cornell West, especially now, is because he has made an announcement that he is running as an independent candidate. And this was brought up by a good friend of the show, Roger Meadows, um, where Dr. Cornell West uh, put out a press release saying he's dropping green and going independent. As a party abolitionist, I approve this message. F the two-party system. F the parties. So, first of all, uh, if you've been watching Heartlands Media, I've been very consistent about supporting third parties and independents. But, again, the abolition of all political parties is 100% the best option we can go to. Now, again, will we ever get to that point? Not anytime soon, but through citizen ballot initiatives at the state level, we can call for the absolute abolition of all political parties and thus breaking a good portion of the neoliberal machine. So I want to pull up this video of Dr. Cornell West making this announcement. So let's check it out together. And this came out today. People are hungry for change. They want good policies over partisan politics. We need to break the grip of duopoly and give power to the people. I'm running as an independent candidate for president of the United States to end the iron grip of the ruling class and ensure true democracy. Now, again, um, I'm not a fan of his campaign manager, but I do find it interesting now that he is running full on independent. So let's play it. We need you to be part and parcel of wrestling with this corporate duopoly, this two party system that impedes, it gets in the way of the unleashing of the kind of policies of abolishing poverty and homelessness, of dealing with working wages, cutting back on militarism, and most importantly, trying to ensure that the best of who we are as a people can be more manifest, can be more concrete because the crisis is real and these catastrophes are bombarding us. Please come join us. Now, again, this just happened recently and I'm all on board uh, for Dr. Cornell West to say that he's running as an independent um, non-party affiliate. I have to wonder what causes change. Um, and I can only speculate. Now, to be clear here, while I do want to see the Green Party and Libertarian Party succeed, I have to be critical of both parties. Now, to be clear here, again, um, Libertarians, to their credit, have maintained having ballot access. And that's pretty impressive. That's an incredible feat to do, especially with the amount of challenges that are facing third parties. Um, can their overall messaging and organization be more centralized and maybe be more on point and consistent? Uh, yes. Yes, yes, it could. But the Greens. I say this out of love, but the organization is one big shite show. I have never seen so much disorganization ever. All right. And as a political party, it is pretty pathetic. And I'm only speaking about my experiences covering the Greens here in my state of Illinois and in my neighboring state of Indiana. It's been lackluster. And mediocre, and I'm being generous and kind with these words because, again, Greens having ballot access has been pretty pathetic. Now, again, th both the Libertarians and Greens, uh, Libertarians more so, have ballot access. Greens only half as much as the Libertarians. Uh, I believe, as it stands right now, uh, 40 states the Libertarians have secured, the Greens around maybe 18 to 21 states. 
However, running as an independent, though, it does bring you new challenges, and you do have to do the arduous fight of getting ballot access, which will be a very difficult chance. If you think Libertarians and Greens have it bad, non-affiliate independents have to cr climb a lot of mountains, Mount Olympus on steroids. But there is an overall hunger by American voters to want something new. And I want to pull up this article here from The Hill. Support for third party rises to 63%. Now, support for third party in the United States uh, has ticked up to 63% in the latest Gallup poll. Nearly 6 in 10 Americans in the new poll say a third major party is needed because the Republican and Democratic parties do such a poor job <coughs> of representing the people. The figure is a seven-point jump from September when 56% said third party was needed. As it stands right here, we're looking at the graph. That number is going to keep on increasing, even after this election cycle. If you vote Democrat or Republican, I am so sorry. You do not have a seat at the table. More Americans need to wake up to that fact. It's also the highest since Gallup first asked the question in 2003. Though similarly high shares said the same in 2017, 61%, and 2021, 62%, the latter coming just after January 6th, the 2021 riot at the Capitol. Oh, my goodness. How could we all forget that stupid day? The idea of a third major party appears more popular among Republicans than Democrats, with 58% of GOP response saying it's needed. That's up 13 points from last year. A Gallup poll notes that Republicans' perception of whether a third party is needed tends to be vary based on whether a Republican or Democrat president is in office, favoring the idea more when a Democrat is in the White House. Democrats and independent stances have been similar under both administrations. Democrat support for a third party went up six points since last year from 40 to 46 percent. Support among independents has been relatively stable over the last few years and sits at a 75 percent. The poll comes amid frustration on both sides of the aisle with two major parties leadership as President Biden runs for reelection and former President Trump leads the GOP primary field. Poor approval numbers for Biden has heightened some concerns about a third party candidate could impact the 2024 race. Conducted September 1st through the 23rd, the Gallup poll surveyed 1,016 adults and had a margin error of 4% percentage points. And this is fantastic. Look, there is a hunger and need for voters to have something new, to get something new. Now, I know a lot of us are burnt out by electoral politics, but perhaps maybe this is the boost that is needed to inspire others, not only to maybe create independent or third-party organizations, but also call for the push and need of citizen ballot initiatives. Now, only a handful of states have access or the ability to become citizen ballot initiative states, and there is a way at the state level where we can implement a citizen ballot initiative to call for the abolition of all political parties. Now, I know there's a good portion of Republican voters out there and, yes, Democratic voters that are out there that are tired of the two-party system, that are tired of the lies of the establishment, that are tired of being jerked around. We need something new. And I think it's time for us as citizens, especially in citizen ballot initiative states, to cross that line and call for the abolition and removal of all political parties. I know each of us want to identify as being part of a team, but what comes down to team politics, team red and team blue, how has that been working out for us these past decades? Boomers, Gen Xers, millennials, Gen Z. How is that working out for all of us? Yeah, it's been pretty terrible. We have been getting stabbed in the back. But of course, corporate media has to up the propaganda because they want to make sure that, well, we can't have people thinking for themselves or demanding accountability. I want to bring this up with RFK Jr.'s independent run, as it has one big problem. Oh, my goodness gracious. When Robert F. Kennedy Jr. was roaming New Hampshire earlier this year, Donald Trump's campaign saw him as pure upside, one source close to the campaign put it. Running to challenge President Joe Biden in the Democratic primary, Kennedy has made a dystopian and conspiratorial critiques of the administration. Again, why? Look think a lot of us can question the pandemic and how that all turned out that doesn't make it conspiratorial especially as more data is being shown that a lot of people who questioned uh, the lockdowns and so much more are being proven factually correct continuing on 
uh, that that disguise misinformation as populism in a way Trump could never pull off, at least under the right circumstances. Since launching his campaign in April, Kennedy has accused the Biden administration of denying him Secret Service protection, which is pretty bad because, again, he is a presidential candidate. He should get Secret Service protection. And he had a recent very frightening, very scary situation take place at one of his events. It's a good thing that there was some security there, but Secret Service should have been given. And it's a good thing no one else got hurt. But I digress. In an unprecedented fashion, implying it was political reasons, by falsely claiming he was the first candidate since the assassination of his father in 1968, not to receive it by the stage of the primary. Again, the Democrats don't care. I'm glad that RFK Jr. at least is somewhat seeing the light. He also gone after Biden on the vaccine rollout in ways Trump couldn't, given that his own White House launched Project Warp Speed to fast track the jabs, accusing the president of being in the pocket of the pharmaceutical industry and calling his fellow uh, Democrat their president. Now that he's moving to run as an independent in the 2024 general election, putting him in direct competition with Trump for similarly inclined voters, Kenny's days of evading MAGA wrath may be numbered. Well, who cares? Let him speak to the people. This politics 101. This is something that Dr. Cornell West is going to have to do to whoever the libertarian nominee is going to have to do. You're going to have to convince voters as a whole in general. Not just their own independence, but yes, Republican voters and Democratic voters, because politics 101, especially in a general election, is convincing everyone that you are the better candidate. And uh, let's face it, looking at the Republican primary field right now, all those people are, are mediocre. The Republican debates are are just a clown show. You're not going to learn anything. You're not going to learn anything except that all those people, they have little support. They're low energy, and they can't hold anything towards Donald Trump. He is, he, he is going to be their nominee. Okay? Simple as that. If he wants to run... Run. Fine. The source close to the Trump campaign told the Daily Beast requesting anonymity to speak candidly about a sensitive issue. But if he chooses to run as an independent, then he's our opponent. Well, of course, Trump campaign. That goes for all candidates, all independents. Simple as that. You know, again, this might be a little bit shocking, especially the Trump campaign needs to pay attention to this. Is that in 2016, obviously before we all knew that Bernie Sanders was a cuck. There were a lot of Republican voters that would have gladly supported Bernie Sanders over Trump. And there was also a call for a time for Bernie Sanders to run as an independent, especially after the disaster and crisis that took place in Philly. But Bernie Sanders is a cuck and he became a loyal, obedient servant to the DNC. The ink is already dry. I think we already know the history. And while Trump has thus far welcomed Kennedy into mix, an independent run would likely warrant some Trump-sized attacks that could finally undermine Kennedy's appeal with the anti-vaccine curious voters feeling his campaign. You know, again, this article from the Daily Beast is making an assumption that it's just only going to be Trump supporters that would be leaking away from the uh, Republican Party. But also, again, there's a good portion of Democratic voters, a lot of them who were bullied into supporting Biden, that want to vote for somebody different. Now, again, many of those voters, be they both Democrat or Republican, have the option of not voting at all, which is understandably correct in their point of view. Electoral politics has failed a lot of us. Now, there, and again, a lot of these Republican and Democratic voters. They might be seeing the other candidates because maybe they're tired of the two party system. A lot of people are waking up, not as fast as I would like it to be. But it is happening slowly, but surely, slowly, but surely. This is necessary because, again, when given an option, voters want to go somewhere else. They're tired of the same thing over and over again. And said Democratic or Republican voters can either vote for Kennedy or Dr. Cornell West, who recently announced in the video that we played earlier in the segment that he's running as an independent or or hey, they could vote libertarian or they could vote for somebody else. that's down the ticket. This is the beginning of something far greater that the entire neoliberal establishment isn't prepared for. And corporate media wants to simplify it and try and convince all of you that you can't figure it out. And oh, no, there's going to be too much drama. That's not how it works. Now, again, I want to continue on. If Kennedy can get on the ballot in key electoral college states where recent elections have been decided by just a few thousand votes, he could potentially attract enough of those anti-vaccine and conspiracy-believing voters to meaningfully impact the outcome. 
who is to say he's going to get all of them because he could get other types of voters, too. That's the thing about living in the United States. You get all sorts of lovely people. Trump world is already sharpening their attacks in preparation to ensure Kennedy would remain a spoiler for Biden and not for Trump. Again, there's no such thing as a spoiler. Republican and Democratic voters who watch the show. You can't spoil something that's already rotten. He's not the centrist that he portrays himself to be, the Trump world source continued, previewing how they might undercut Kennedy. He's a hardline Democrat on a bunch of major issues that run against the Republican Party, specifically MAGA Republicans. OK, the Kennedy campaign did not return quest for comment for this story. Obviously, who would want to listen to the Daily Beast because the Daily Beast just wants to just spew out things from their wazoo. So what can we take from this? What can we learn about the Democrats and the Republicans who are trying to maintain the status quo, especially those within the political party, because they're realizing they're losing voters. The support for a Republican or a Democrat is starting to wane. People are angry. We've been dealing this now for decades, and all the various groups, no matter the color of your skin or where you stand on the political spectrum or what generation you're part of, we want something new. And for too long, the establishment has assumed that we'd be obedient and subservient to said system. Those days are over. I hoped, and I kept on saying to myself, I want 2024 to be engaging, to be entertaining, to really stand out. Not to be the most important election year, because I've heard that so many times it's been played out. But I want this to be the most exciting, the most entertaining, the most hilarious, the most engaging election year. And I hope that's the case for 2024. I want to see that happen. And come election night, no matter how it plays out, I'm going to be enjoying it by eating a nice ribeye steak, a glass of, having a glass of wine, some other wonderful side dishes, and enjoying the show. And with everything that's turning out that's going to happen, just me being petty here, I'm looking forward to seeing the liberals panic because how's that old dog Biden doing? 